Okay, praise for it. Not a mound of alcohol tinged breath could be enough to prepare me for a bar smell, surely. Mother always talks about how awful bars are and how that's why she only dr ever drinks at home. Sweaty and piggish and smelling like failure. This can only lead to misery. Slowly, I part the fingers over my nostrils. It does not smell at all. Cut that out, Winter. You look ridiculous. Hey, leave me alone. I've been misled. Slowly, I put my hand, but not without glaring at Cyrus. He ignores this, of course, and walks over to an empty table to have a seat. Then he pats the top of his chair next to him, inviting me. Well, whatever. I followed his lead, still cautious of this place. I notice how there's uh, only few people here, although it's lunch hour. What do you imagine that means? Most of the people here really like to work? Or maybe they really have to. Well, it's probably a good thing that this place is so empty. Too many customers might be a bit overwhelming for you. Can also make it rather difficult to actually find anything. I see. There are four other people in the bar besides us. All whom are men, and the thrice, or my age, I believe. The two who seem to be customers are dressed in rather a rough manner, like they've walked out of construction site. I'm not the type to pride myself on appearance or anything, but I actually feel slightly embarrassed for them. <coughs> they aren't the first in this world to look so deplorable, dull. In fact, I would say they look fairly good by comparison. Most people I've looked, they look like they picked their outfits from a pile of rags. Pile of rags. Thankfully, the other two, both in uniform, are very presentable. The waiter, or he's probably the waiter, looks rather spiffy and the man behind the counter is cleansely dressed, so this world is not entirely hopeless. But enough about men and clothes. The wall behind the counter is far more interesting. There are two lengthy rows, wildly varying portals, some round, some square, some outright peculiar. Admittedly, I am intense. For only a second, I assure you. After all, I have been told that alcohol tastes like piss. Well, I wouldn't know myself. I've never tried it. What? You've never tried alcohol? No. Piss. It isn't the best until you get used to it. That aside, I've also been told that it makes you act like a twit, causes bolts of forgetfulness and slowly poisons your liver. That is true, to a point. Eventually, you become addicted to it. And not everybody does, but there is a possibility. Then why drink it? Some people enjoy losing control over themselves, and many love to forget. You'll see for yourself and be able to form your own opinion soon. I would rather not. Honestly, I am more fine with the following popular opinion. It is often correct and has saved me a lot of trouble in the past. While my thoughts wander to safer days, the man who I believe is the waiter comes to our table. What can I get you? Two beers. Any brand you'd like. Coming right up. When he departs, I find myself curious about the two things. Firstly, I have to drink two beers? No, one is for me. Why would you want to drink one? I'm one of the people who enjoys losing a bit of control over themselves. 
I would not have begged him the sword. And I didn't read the second thing. What's a brand, sir? Does it have something to do with fire and iron? Uh, pardon? Well, we used to brand cattle and other animals with a symbol that would associate them with their farmer, right? That is, if I remember, my history. <clears throat> that was with fire and iron, so is this something familiar? I'm not saying something stupid, am I? Is it how the alcohol is made, perhaps? Are the ingredients burned in some way before they officially beer? Maybe with some sort of spiritual symbol. Do they do call them spirits after all? There must be a reason for that, right? <coughs> Why isn't he saying anything? Oh, or has it something to do with the real spirits? Like some sort of rite where each branch it's brewed in honor of someone who's died? I mean, I've read this. Places can be very strange and... Am I close? Oh, please let me be close. No. No, you are not close. Crap, I should have shut up way earlier. Why did I ramble like that? Now I look like a fool. Honestly, though, I'm a little disappointed. Some fantasy would be nice. Um, Winter, I'm starting to think you've already gotten yourself drunk off the atmosphere. Oh, please. Here you go. <coughs> the waiter has returned, bearing two tall and thick tongers foaming at the brim. Beer, right? I know more of what kind minds. One is placed in front of Cyrus and the one in front of me. Enjoy. He leaves. I peek over my cup slip and peer into its mouth. The beverage does not take kindly to my curiosity, bubbling and spitting at me. I withdraw with a start. How intimidating! Sir? Don't be such a baby. It won't kill you. There be much worse things you'll have to swallow than alcohol, trust me. It sounds as though Cyrus is perfectly fine with bending over. Should be the situation demanded. Ingesting things like this? Interesting things worse than this? Allow me to apologize, Cyrus, but I am not a wimp. I know where to draw the line. It is quite the opposite of weakness, really. Strength! No one is going to be forcing me to do anything I don't agree to. That said, I did say I would drink some of this. Lifting the glass with both hands, gingerly tipped with toward my lips and taking in mouthful. Oh heavens, I do not want to drink this! I swish the liquid a bit and it mixes with my saliva. It seems nearly viscous even. I want to retch. This is simply the worst thing I have ever put in my mouth. Atrocious. It pulls the back of my throat with a sizzling no. A burning sensation that has spread throughout my entire oral cavity. The Odriel's glass is the last and then seconds before I stop thinking and just swallow it. <coughs> <coughs> oh, come on. Goosebumps ripple across my skin and my eyes water. The beer strains down my escoposcopus, raising everything in its descent. Oh. Uh, <coughs> this is disgusting. Cyrus proceeds to drain half of these glass with speed, reviling my mother's and. Expression just as intensible. It amazes me that he can stomach it, and even more that he is willingly subjecting himself to it. Oh, it is pretty okay, actually. 
Best I've had in a while. You're choking. That's worse than what I imagine pissed to taste like. And the sensation, everything about it, it's just disgusting. Honestly, I find myself at loss for words here. This beverage is just nasty. Finish that class and we'll move along. I'm not finishing this. Do it. Do it! I mock him. Don't take that zone. Just finish your glass. Finish my glass? <laughs> I let my hands drop with gravity, my cup crashing onto the table. Yes! This is what you want me to finish? Then Cyrus. Who am I quickly losing respect for? I will drink this mug and in fact finish it if you do one thing for me in the future. Pardon? It isn't loud in here, Cyrus. I know that you heard me. Well then, what do you want me to do? Nothing now. The future is not now. Now is the present. The future is later and I will tell you then. You're sure you're not drunk, Winter? Hush. Fine. You'll have your way if you'll have mine, Winter Harrison. It is a deal you cannot break, sir. With that, I drain my glass in matter of seconds using technique I've observed over the years. When I set it down, there's a knot but studs. Suds. Cyrus is impressed. I'm appalled. Oh, this is so nasty! I squeeze my eyes shut and let the wave of warm, trembling feelings wash over me. Ugh. Mercy, Winter, that was something else. How are you feeling? I answer him with a stare and shiver. Really? I shake my head. Honestly, now that the wretched experience if an instant is over, I realize I was overreacting. While certainly vile, it doesn't seem to be immediately damaging. It looks like it will take more than one beer to impair my judgment. Either that or this stuff's effects are simply delayed. <laughs> I am fine, I think. Oh, you should be. Yes, I don't really. I realized I must have spoken too soon, as I suddenly feel a bit as though I'm glowing. It's not a terrible feeling, and it seemed to be still myself. All is in order. I don't feel much different at all. Give it some time. You don't really drink too much anyway. There are usually a whole lot of alcohol in beer. Wonderful. Both of my theories are true. Okay, so what now? Now we begin converser conversing. Cyrus distinctly points to a man in the corner. I'm going to talk to that man. You take the one at counter. Try bringing up work and going from there. Oh, and of course, don't forget to keep where, the, where they're from and why they are here. We're, we're here, a secret. That kind of bothering chip should e shouldn't even be allowed to you kids. I'm going to talk to him alone? Well, yes, it, I think it would make pretty uncomfortable to have both of us ganging upon him. Oh, I don't know about this. <clears throat> don't worry, the bartender is right there and I'm not far either. Nothing will happen to you. It's not that I'm just not very good at talking people. 
You're doing fine with me. You're my superior. Just go over there and give it a try. Fine! I get out of my seat and immediately yank at the table's edge as the floor shifts. Oh no! My knees quiver with fear and I firmly pant my feet and my heart thumping like I'm about to die. Gracious, what was that? Did something happen? Have we failed? <laughs> Calm down, you're just a bit tipsy. Shut up. I pause. Tipsy, oh bust, right. I'm just... Oh crap. Just get over there. I surprised myself, briskly taking sides to this counter. I found the act curiously challenging and amusing. Each step I consider rather silly in its shakiness and I begin to wondering about how people can learn to walk at all. It's not how my thoughts usually go, I think. I can't quite remember what I usually think about right now. I'm not drunk. I have an idea of what that is from looking, and it's not it. Ah, right. I am tipsy. <coughs> Goodness. I'm unbalanced. I start slowing near the stools and suddenly break out in cold sweat. I am not good with people, so what am I doing to, about talking to a man? While I'm considering this, the order to stop is not processed physically. I sit right now to next to the gentleman as if it's the most natural thing in the world, and we were the oldest pals. Strong ties, bonds formed years of manual labor at the piers. I wonder how much alcohol I actually drank. Enough of this. Engage the man by his eyes. Yes, like that? Like in the books? Hmm. Lean forward and get a closer look, Winter Harrison. Oh, well, isn't he scruffy? Almost in a adorable way. His cheeks and chin are dashed all over with stubble and his eyes are soft and caring. He vaguely reminds me of a father I knew was not mine, but classmates. I open my mouth and mentally say hello, but the order is again not actually processed, so I just hang my jaw and stare. He notices. Hello there, miss. Hello? It is all I can do to say this. I fail to keep his attention and his eyes return to the television above the bar. Television, that's right. They have that here. It seems to be a sports channel that he is watching, not that I know which. I only know it's sports as there is a ball, there are people and both are on a field. Oh, and it seems to involve only sculpted men, particularly inmate sport. Wait, I'm overthinking it. Though I do believe the most sports have peculiar and exciting kind of subjects. This one I think I could particularly like to watch. You're a little young to be in here, aren't you? Yes, I am! I am 14! I should not be here! I am here with my dad, uncle. My dad would never bring me here. My uncle uh, was brought me here while he's on break. Right, and should work. Where is he? I point to Cyrus, who is now talking amiably with another man in the corner. Goodness, such vast friends. He is the younger, ownerly looking person. The old man chuckles and smiles as though I've made a joke. Interesting word choice, girl. I read books. That's so. It is so. Uh, very much so. I read a lot. Hmm. 
Is she celebrating the good news? Uh, maybe? Was there some news? Uh... Do you mean the minimum wage increase, sir? Yes, great news, isn't it? He grins. I mirror him. It is, I'm glad. Are you working yet? This, um, yes, it is working that I'm doing. Granted, unpaid, I am learning. Yes, I just started a little while ago. I see. Well, welcome to the workforce, Miss Young Miss. Have you gotten your first paycheck yet? No, not yet. And my name is Winter. That should have been two sentences. Nice to meet you, Winter. I'm David. I've stopped speaking. I don't know why. It's almost as though anything I say will make sense, so I've shut up doesn't speak either. The quittance is getting off to me. Isn't there something I can say? Anything? What can I say? No, I'm lost. This is a terrible feeling. Like I'm drowning in air. Think, think, there must be a something. What? You okay? Huh? <coughs> oh no, I'm panicking. He could tell that's bad. Is this because of the alcohol? It must be the alcohol! Uh, I'm, I, I am, yeah, yeah. Speak! So, what do you do? Like for your work, I mean. <clears throat> uh, you know, help out that wharf, head down into the mines, pick out of parts. That's amazing! Huh, amazing, no, no. When you get older, you have to run multiple jobs too. Just about the only way to survive these days. How about you? What do you do? Oh crap, what do I do? Why didn't I think of something for stupid, stupid, stupid? I shut my eyes for a second, give a quick shake of my head. Um, what do I do? Well, I guess I could technically be considered a... I'm a consoler. A counselor? Y yes. Huh. Please let that be an acceptable job. Doesn't really seem like something that would suit you. No offense or anything. I didn't really choose it. He gives me a somber nod of recognition. Yeah, you gotta do take what you're given. Yes. I suddenly feel miserable and decide to lean onto the counter. I rest my head, letting fluff my hair and sleeve serves as a pillow, and I look away from David. That's right, I didn't really choose it. I didn't really choose anything. As decisions came around, I just sat on my hands thinking, I don't know, thinking that something would have come to me. In a sense, I suppose that something did, but it wasn't the usual way. Everyone else knew that they wanted to do after secondary school and I was stuck on the path of a freeter. A Frita, a step away from a leech. <sighs> I couldn't pick a specialty at school. I didn't know what I wanted. School, meditorium, huh? What is this school? Why uh, had I ever heard of it? Yet somehow my parents weren't surprised by the name. Why was I chosen? What's more, how? I never applied to this thing. Why did I even accept to go? I guess I was just happy that something had been found for me. And the system always knows best. I mean, it's not as though I dislike it. The classwork and homework are bearable. And my first shadowing one, okay enough. But is this what I am? Is this what I am meant to do? Oh, this is stupid. What am I thinking? The Olic truly is infallible. 
They never make mistakes, therefore this must be what's right for me. Even if everything about is totally weird. Kako, what's my issue? This is paper better than it would have happened. When did I start to caring so much about my direction? Wait, what am I thinking? I'm supposed to care about that. Still, why should I? How should I know the way to forge my life's path when I'm just 14? I don't even know what I'll be like in eight years. I shouldn't have to care about this now. No, this is really messed up. I'm so messed up. Hey, 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 don't get like that. I'm sorry I brought it up. Can I get you something to drink? I turn back a glance at David, my nose deep brushing against cloth and sending a tingle across my face. Seeing him, I remember again. I'm in another world, as if I didn't have enough worries back home. Now I have a whole new world to worry about here. Another world which I had never heard of, but I'm supposed to believe it is real. I just because things are here right in front of my eyes. So much strange stuff has happened to me that I could just be dreaming. Is this man even real? Is he really here? Maybe he isn't. I've heard that there are illusions. Would I prefer an illusion? Would I prefer this to be a dream? Maybe some sort of virtual reality. <clears throat> I'll end this episode in here. Uh, I think the story is going to end up great. It's starting slowly, but what we know now is that these guys are really human and they are traveling from world to world managing chaos because humans are stupid and cannot handle it so they are helping and they discover new worlds and everything <clears throat> so yeah I really like this I really want to see more I hope you would want to see more so thank you guys so much for watching thank you for all of the love and support and I will see you in the next one bye bye Spurs. Because my love's not big